My name is Laura Muldowney, and I am a researcher with the Chester Beatty's East Asian Collections. Today, I'd like to highlight a lovely Chinese album which shows images of silk making in China. China is renowned for its silk and may have been produced there for more than 6,000 years. Chinese silk became a valuable commodity prized by many cultures. It was traded through Asia, Europe, and North Africa across a vast network of ancient trade routes known as the Silk Road. It was also greatly treasured within China. The collections of the Chestubidi include a pair of albums detailing the processes involved in the cultivation of rice and the production of silk. In imperial China, these two industries were regarded as the pillars of a well-run and peaceful state. The albums were commissioned in 1696 by the Kangxi Emperor, who ruled China from 1662 to 1722. As well as promoting these industries, the albums were intended to demonstrate, through powerful images, the prosperity of China during his reign. While the text and black outlines of the images are printed, the color has been painted by hand on each page. The emperor's poems accompany the pictures. The Sericulture album introduces the various stages of silk production as it was practiced in China. Silk is a natural fiber spun by silkworms, the larvae or caterpillars of the silk moth. In the spring, women washed silkworm eggs that had been stored over the winter. When the eggs hatched, the silkworms were spread onto trays where they had room to grow. Silkworms require ideal conditions in order to spin their silk cocoons. In the months between hatching and spinning, temperature and environment were carefully monitored. During this time, the silkworms were fed finely chopped mulberry leaves every few hours. Here, a woman and young boy carry baskets of mulberry leaves to the women tending the silkworms, while in the next image, men pick mulberry leaves from trees. When it was time for the silkworms to spin their cocoons, they were placed on carefully cleaned mats where they were closely watched. Spinning took about a week. When the spinning was complete, the spun cocoons were plunged into boiling water. This killed the silkworms and also loosened the silk fibers of the cocoons. The fiber from each cocoon was reeled onto a spindle. Fibers from several cocoons were reeled together to make a strong thread. Skeins of silk thread were dyed before being woven into cloth. While a loom operated by one woman was used to prepare simple woven fabrics, more complex pattern fabrics required a two-person loom. In the last illustrations, women are shown admiring the beautiful newly woven silk before it is brought to the tailor. Made into garments ranging from lucky children's shoes to lavishly embroidered imperial robes and traded far beyond its borders, Chinese silk reflected its prosperity.